Hello everyone, Cynthia here with uh, the next part of the Religion for Games Cross with Astral Collision series. And today I am going to be continuing, as one would guess, with the stuff over here. So last time I was working on the before Astral Collision section where I was kind of describing what is the state of each of these worlds just before the Astral Collision events happened. And specifically, uh, what was going on uh, in terms of the general setup of the world and what is my player's goal with interacting with the stuff that comes from this world. So, for example, here in Kendra, uh, the Adventurer's Guild has been firmly established by the time uh, things begin. And so it's it's everywhere uh, in, in all of the towns and outposts and stuff. And there are some well-known teams uh, that we'll probably be interacting with once the world's kind of come together. And uh, just some stuff about like who the villain is and what's happened with Sir Lionel. It's kind of relevant here. And um, what sort of this general, general broad stroke state is. What I'm working on doing here is basically giving me some foundation to build stuff in as I'm making things in the game. As I'm working on narrative in the game. As I'm fleshing out world zones in the game. And so this is not necessarily supposed to be high detail in terms of uh, having a lot of specific highly fleshed out stuff. It's just here is something that I can work with and a solid foundation to kind of build things on. So um, what I'll be doing once I finish going through all of these, which I'm planning on getting to this second half right here today, that's the goal. And then uh, I will be figuring out, okay, what are some of the points of conflict? What are things that has happened? Because while I'm getting out some of those individual details of like, what do things look like a little bit post the astral collision? I'm, I'm really kind of figuring out what are the pieces of each individual place? And then I'm going to figure out how they get smashed together once the astral collision happens. So that's going to be for later though. Uh, as it was proven last time, these take a while to get through. So which I keep saying. Our next goal will be Sindire. So uh, I need to go back up and review stuff with uh, the Jennifer character. And her profile says that a student of moderate skill at the ancient university of Golda who filled her essays with prophecies. And But she was pretty late. Sorry for bumping the table there. She was pretty late into everything. So I need to then go check. Uh, yeah, Sindire desired to learn the secrets of the natural world and so they are given a world of deep secrets came to disregard the tales of the creator as old meaningless myths okay so this is what generally happens to the world so this gives me general history trajectory so now i need to figure out where it is okay so this is um a world with a volcanic surface so they built uh, extensive tunnel networks underground the main biggest city is mountain root i think this one i actually have somewhat described uh, in some of these actually you know what probably easier to get to if I go over to the spreadsheet and check world plan world information so mountain root is the name of the main city of this volcanic world people live underground all sorts of hideous monsters live in the lava tubes apparently Zadia um, okay so mountain root has a space in it this is the name of the city um, so it's Mountain Root. Um, they have extensive technology which keeps strange creatures uh, at bay in some of the deeper tunnels. Should feel a little like Moria. So that's kind of what, what I'm thinking with some of this. Um, now what I'm trying to figure out is 
boy, I'm glad I have background music going right now. So the world as we see it in game is probably pretty small. Uh, we have right here, this is the surface from their world. And then I'm going to have the subway system that leads to, uh, to Mountain Route. And then there's probably going to be side tunnels you can take in there, but I'm guessing, um, I'm not sure. Okay, so this is this is an interesting question, um, because this affects some of this backstory world building stuff and how I handle things. I need to think about this. So I have subway tickets right here. Uh, I forget how many there are, like twelve, or like twelve, because uh, index zero. So I have twelve subway tickets. These go to different places on the world around the world. Uh, and I have subway station, well, obviously because I had the zoomed out for the world. Uh, I have the subway station access uh, and the subway station. The idea is this exits out into some surface area. Now, the question that I have to deal with is what was this before the events of the collision? Uh, and how does that play into how things are now? Because do I have basically what I'm what I need to figure out is are these going to be in smaller towns uh, spread throughout the world, right? That's that's the question that I have to have. I can go back to the world here. This is a mountain that has a subway in it, uh, mountain with subway in it, so on and so forth. Mountain with subway in it. You you get the idea. Like, this goes down to, um, like they're just different locations. So, do I have these all be, uh, contained, like, various towns and outposts from, uh, Sindir? Or do I figure out some other explanation for their existence everywhere? Um... I kind of like the idea that there are a bunch of research outposts that spread out off of this this place. Um, so I think I'm gonna go roll with that idea. They built an extensive research network connected by subway stations. Um, The stations allow for quick travel on the subway system between these various research areas that probably have some amount of town built up around them. Each one maybe has a distinct specialty. Um, let's see, these people are, uh, almost entirely, if not actually entirely secular, uh, with a belief that there is nothing supernatural. monsters let's see the more supernatural ish things that infest the deeper places must have some natural explanation right so I think that's kind of the direction that I'm going to go with them that there's they believe everything is um, of non-material origins. I think it's important that I define what I mean by supernatural here because I think it's really easy to kind of hand wave it and be a little like loose because like super like what makes something supernatural right um, is entirely defined by what is natural and so 
if something is considered non-natural, it's either subnatural or supernatural, where subnatural would be less than natural. Um, so I don't know exactly how you want to describe what that concept would even be, but supernatural I think of as being something that is beyond nature, or above nature, greater than nature. Same idea of like superscript is up, subscript is down. Um, and so like in hyper and hypo is a similar example. Um, so supernatural, I need to figure out what am I actually meaning by this? Because is it really supernatural if it's just normal, right? If it's just natural or whatever, it's a bit like, it, it's a bit of a strange word is what I'm saying. Uh, and a bit of a strange concept in some regards of like, and I think what it's generally referring to is something that we think of as belonging to things that are not, not stuff that we're used to experiencing in our normal everyday lives. But then if that's kind of what you're using as your definition, like if you say a vampire is supernatural um, because it's uh, not something people typically interact with, that's not a useful definition because then if people do normally interact with vampires, then they just become natural, they become normal. So if we're using it as, as super normal rather than supernatural, right? Um, where, say, a vampire that's created through some sort of deep, deadly curse or something might be supernatural in the sense that that curse is, is uh, something beyond nature. Um, and so I think I'm going to lean into the idea that supernatural means it is spiritual. It is of non-material origins. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to be using for kind of my definitional uh, working of the term here. And that might be what its actual definition is. I don't know. Um I can always, actually, this is handy to do, define supernatural uh, of a manifestation or event attributed to some force beyond scientific understanding or the laws of nature, a supernatural being. Um, manifestation or events considered to be of supernatural origin, such as ghosts. So beyond scientific understanding of the laws of nature. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I'm doing here. Um, I like being able to pull up the dictionary like that. Uh so then I think what they are trying to do, um, I suspect a lot, you know what? I don't need to suspect, uh, a lot of, cause I'm the creator here, right? I can do whatever I want. Uh, a lot of what these people are trying to do is understand or is to, to de trying to do is to determine the, uh, natural origins of things that seem beyond explanation. Gold uh, University was founded by one of the original uh, residents uh, and builders of Mountain root named gold, uh, obviously. So it is quite old. Uh, naming preferences have changed since those days. So this is this is a small little bit of world building, but if we look up here uh, to uh, Kaldisha and Esgard Duel, they're a fellow core. And they use this sort of apostrophe style name thing. Now, this is something that I've kind of backed into, but I'm going to embrace. If we come down here uh, to Sindar, it's also Felicor. It's the same sort of group of people. They could just split differently. Golda University uses that same apostrophe style naming scheme, but Jennifer clearly does not. So I, I think it's something where they've changed how they approach naming. Now, I named this character Jennifer because Jennifer means like fair or white, and the character is white. Um, I was originally going to name it like Guinevere, but then I... I didn't want to have... I wanted all of my character names to start with a different letter. So I changed it to Jennifer, which is um, a different version of Guinevere. They're the same sort of base name, uh, as I understand things. So anyway, uh, I'm going to kind of embrace this idea that one of the ways that you can tell something is old in uh, Sindire is that it uses this sort of... Uh, or, you know, somebody is from the past is it uses this sort of older style naming scheme that they abandoned at some point. Um, so I think that's a neat little touch that I can can make use of. Okay, so 
um, what my general thought was is um, the person who kind of went sideways here. Now, I have this written in my spreadsheet before I fully kind of went into it. But if you become the darkness, you no longer have to fear it, right? So um, I think that there's probably some um, elite research team. Okay, there's some elite research team uh, studying the darker places, uh, the darker, more, most dangerous, the darkest, most dangerous places. Uh, this team has gotten warped by their research. Uh, and is becoming the darker things that people fear in their pursuit of knowledge and understanding. They're probably pretty disconnected from society and have fallen into the knowledge at any cost uh, mindset. So they're doing hideous experiments that have turned them themselves into horrible monsters. Ah, typos that have experiments? Ex Experiments. Typos, man. Typos. Uh, basically, they've done his experiments that have turned them into monsters. Something along those lines is, is what I'm going to go with. Um, another team was responsible for the astral collision itself with the goal of studying other worlds. Uh, helping the teams, uh, helping this latter team understand uh, spiritual origins of things uh, is the goal of the player as is defeating the uh, darkest places research team yeah that that seems pretty straightforward there's a lot going on here this is somewhat of a complicated place um, but you know all of them might be okay so now we need to get to Hannah and Ron Piety now Hannah I remember offhand was the first she actually uh, helped establish her location she was uh, there at the split now, uh, it says, very early, first, a spiritual leader among her nomadic people, her words form the foundation of her people's religion. Uh, and then, let's see, thankfully I have Ron Piety, uh, wanted to pursue religion and so got a world that became formed by that, uh, formed a complex and highly structured religion, develop uh, a set of rituals, this should be an ED on it, developed a set of rituals, priestly posts, and so forth, Pope type figure, uh, must always be a woman because of Hannah. Okay, so Ron Piety, uh, Hannah, and Yadar uh, is the species. So um, the religious teachings of Hannah got collected into a book uh, named To Be Determined. Maybe we'll do that here. Um, And, uh, I mean, it could just be something like the Book of Hannah. Uh, that's how, uh, like, the Book of Mormon is named after one of the key figures of that book and stuff like that. But, um, typically there's probably going to be some fairly simple and straightforward name to this. So it could just be something like the teachings, um, 
or it could be called, like the teachings of Hannah that gets abbreviated to teachings, something along those lines. I think is the direction that I'm going to head. Um, I actually the teachings of Hannah usually called the teachings. I think that's what I'm going to go with. Um, that's a pretty straightforward. Why did I keep missing the H? For those who are curious about some behind the story stuff, Hannah is named that because her character has a very floral affect, and Hana is Japanese for flower. So there we go. Even though this is like uh, a Jewish name, there's a Hannah in the Bible. He prays for son and has Samuel, the prophet. Neither here nor there. Uh, the the origin my choice for this name is is the, the that Japanese route of Hana being flower. Uh, okay, uh, so the teachings of Hana usually called the teachings, um, and a people that was originally nomadic because the world was <laughs> had just changed dramatically around them uh, settled down and formed uh, villages. Religion was the centerpiece of their life and uh, life something that continued until the astral collision. Normally I'd capitalize this, so let's do that. Um, so, structurally, I'm going to just bullet point this because this seems more straightforward. Um, so they're going to need to have religious uh, positions, people, I don't know, posts, what do I want to call this? Whatever. So I need a hierarchy here of... Um, I'm not sure what I want to call the top tier. Where does the word Pope even come from? I mean, that's neither here nor there. Um, so we need uh, top... Um, advisor? Let's say scholar... So this is Pope Equiv must be female because Hannah was female. That sort of stuff persists in things. Um, people get ideas about how stuff should look. We're going to do that. Um, scholar, these are uh, people who specifically uh, get into studying the teachings um scribe these are people who have the specific job of copying the teachings this is really important this is an incredibly important a very tedious uh job they would become there's probably some overlap between scholars and scribes uh, and they definitely would work closely together. Um, regional her hierarchy. Uh, I'm not sure what the Catholic Church calls these. That so the Catholic, the Roman Roman Catholicism is a really useful model for a lot of this stuff. I'm not looking to necessarily do anything directly from it but i am definitely considering a lot of some of these these traditions and thinking back to like some of the stuff described in the bible as well like uh pharisees and and teachers of the law and stuff like that um and just trying to think about what are examples that i'm familiar with uh from religion that gives me some good uh examples of how to do stuff now one of the things i'm going to need to figure out as well is what are some of the important teachings uh and some of the stuff related to that um because that's going to be a really big deal that's going to be something that's quite important um so anyway these are going to be uh 
over multiple towns. Um, local parish over a single town. I don't think... I don't think that there's going to be a monk equivalent, though. I think that they don't see that as being something that's important because... So, the idea of, um, of like, a monk type thing, monks, nuns, that, that sort of thing, as far as I understand it, I could be wrong, uh, is that the idea is that these are people who have especially dedicated themselves to religion. Uh, they often have uh, vows of poverty or austerity, and it's connected with a lot of traditional worldly ideas of holiness and religion and separating them oneself from uh, from possessions and um, worldly pleasures and all sorts of stuff and going off and living in isolation to kind of draw closer to the divine uh, and then often acts of service like it, it can be complicated and nuanced but the basic idea is there's um, specific dedications and austerity and stuff connected to it I think that I'm not going to have anything along those lines specifically in this um, religion. And the reason for that um, is that I don't... These people all view themselves as needing to be dedicated to their religion. So the idea of having a class that is more dedicated... Um, that says, oh, we need to separate ourselves from the world. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, it wouldn't make any sense in this setting uh, to these people because, like, the entire world is a monastery, if that makes sense. You you don't call... You don't make a specific thing that is just the thing that everybody feels that they need to be doing at minimum, if that makes any sense. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that they're going to go for sort of the austerity thing. I, the religion is not formed with that at its basis, I don't think. Um, this probably has, uh, a head, uh, pastor, preacher, and then maybe a few, uh, smaller ones in larger cities. So what I'm basically saying here is like a local parish or like a, a local, like this is the for lack of a better phrase, the, the church in this area. Uh, so let's double check. Hannah is nine. So if we go to the 90s over here in our region map, uh, they're over here. It's a large area. You can see how much 90 uh, takes over. Now it's right next to 30, which is a very similar color, unfortunately. But you can see like there's a, some bigger towns over here. There's some temples all spread throughout the area. Um, and so there's in one of these larger locations, they might have multiple like shrines or temples or whatever. And in that setup, they're going to potentially have, like, they're going to need to have staff for each temple location, but there's going to be somebody who's over that city as well as people who are within that versus something like this, where there's a town. Well, maybe there's only like one priest sort of character um so uh yeah and then um let's see uh heads of um freestanding temples uh so not associated with uh, a specific village city. Okay. Um, religious structures. They probably have temples. Shrines. Um, larger structures. Uh, smaller structures. But I think I'm going to have um, one more here. That's also... Uh, very large structure. Um, and this is because this was something that came to me as I was looking at the map. I've got these spread all over the place. So temples and shrines are going to be in cities, but these are going to be larger structures that are outside of 
cities. So these need to be very large structures that exist uh, outside of a village city. See, freestanding temple. Um, often the dwelling of scribes and scholars. Okay, um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to call these just yet. Shrine and temple are fairly straightforward to traditional terms. Um, and I don't have a specific idea for what these should be called just yet. I'll come back to that later. Um, I also am going to need for this place um, the, the teachings of Hannah. Um, this is something that's such a big task that it's going to need to be done off camera because it's going to take a lot of thinking. It's going to take a lot of time to kind of come up with sort of the central structure of, of the teachings of Hannah, what it says and, and to flesh it out. And I think that's a bit beyond the scope of this specific video, but it's something that I know that I'm going to need, just like I'm going to need the poem that goes on all of the pillars. And, um... The way that I think... I've been doing some more thinking about that, and I think that's something that... Um, there might be some, like, partial stuff that... I don't know. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to handle that entirely. But I was thinking about the idea of potentially having, like, oh, there's a stanza on this one, a stanza on this one, a stanza on this one, but I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that. Uh, I like that idea, and I don't like that idea at the same time. But it's something that I've been thinking about a little bit. So um, those are all important structural elements... Uh, and so the uh, Pope equivalent uh, believed it was her believed believed I don't know believed it was her uh, sacred responsibility to bring about the astral collision due to the uh, due to the teachings. Um. You know what? Let's look at this here. So structurally, this is just south of these folks, um, which, yeah, they're the fives. Um, that's Talman's place. It's right next to the desert, which has a bunch of wandering people in it. And it's right next to... Uh, this, which we haven't gotten to just yet, uh, I believe. This is, yeah, this is two more away. Um, this is Francis's place. I suspect that they did not necessarily have uh, any specific monsters or anything like that. Um, I don't even know if they had... Yeah, okay. What I'm thinking here, uh, because I'm trying to think, what threats did they have to deal with? And what I'm thinking is they didn't. They didn't have any threats that they were dealing with. They generally got along with each other pretty well. It was a pretty peaceful place. And what's happened with the astral, like, they want to uh, follow the will of the creator. That's kind of their, their central goal. Um, their central goal is to follow follow the will of the creator um and their world had no natural hostilities in it monsters etc uh this is part of what led to slower technological growth in so much as they had no driving external forces. So basically, they didn't have any wars uh, or fights for survival in the extreme sense. Uh, basically, no wars or extreme fights for survival to propel technological developments uh, quickly. 
So I think that they probably have a really good solid, um, a really good solid way of life. Um, and they'd done uh, a lot uh, medicinally. That is not how you spell medicinally, Santier. Medicinally. So what I'm basically Im imagining for this place, uh, to kind of get the thoughts more fully out of my head, is that this is a place that's very dedicated to religion, and they want to ease the suffering of their people. They want to make sure everybody has, you know, enough. Um, but they are dedicated to religious pursuit. They're dedicated to... Uh, so they're not, like, the most expansive builders. Um... They are uh, religiously minded, and um, they have gone after like people's faults. They've gone after disease, um, and overall, they're doing pretty well. Actually, they're not the most technologically advanced because they haven't had a drive for it. They haven't had a need for it, but they're doing pretty well. And then the astral collision happens and a bunch of invaders from everywhere come streaming in. Uh, and suddenly they're finding themselves on kind of a, a back foot that way. They're not prepared for all of the conflict that, that's happened. Um, that's begun to kind of seep in. And so uh, I imagine at the astral collision, all sorts of bad stuff goes down for them. Um, so... I think what they're going to need is they're going to need um, the player is going to need to help support and encourage them as well as in actual terms equip them to defend themselves uh, from the threats for which they are woefully ill-prepared uh yeah hyphen here ill-prepared when the astral collision occurs because they're gonna think we've done something like what's going on uh we are we being punished like they're gonna have a lot of questions about what's going on with the astral collision it's like no you need to be um they need to be a strong example uh for the rest of of the world that's kind of their purpose so i'm kind of holding these guys up in a, a very positive way i think overall um they have their they're gonna have some of their flaws but they overall emphasize like and this is gonna need to go into the teachings but overall emphasizing uh elevating the common humanness or the humanness is the wrong term when you have things that are non-human but you get what i mean the the beingness of individuals and um the importance of uh being kind and compassionate and they're gonna have to to deal with some really difficult painful stuff okay foul saw is going to be first of all that is i want to say up here i think this is 10 yeah this is this is 10 so it's up here it's foul saw um Okay, so Devin McElroy was earlier on. He's a well-regarded soldier who dreamed of war that was not his own. And he recorded these dreams to no avail. Uh, basically, people didn't really think anything of his records. Um, and Foul saw at the split. So the pursuit of justice turned to vengeance and bloody wars. Eventually, they learn what justice is and peace grows. Elevate the court system to a high position, but go fairly mellow and secular as well. Get caught up in a cycle of vengeance and warfare, and as a result, uh, religious considerations got pushed to the side. Um, okay, so... Um, these are a people who... Uh, in many regards, worship justice. Um, I'd say they have a, a very... Egal egalitarian society what do you not like about this whoops that is the wrong button uh 
no. This this is suggestion is wrong. Um, these are people who, in many regards, worship justice. Uh, I say they have a very egalitarian society. Um, but perhaps a bit of a nervous one. Yeah. Um, in so much as there is a bit of, how do I want to describe this? Um, a culture of, uh, reporting on the crimes of your neighbors. Um, they have a very developed legal system and a highly revered system of courts. Uh, in the past, there were many wars for vengeance uh dressed that's not how you spell dressed dressed up as wars uh for justice they eventually rejected those ways um when devon was around but those wars did propel a lot of technological advancement um okay so we've got this going on i think uh yeah by the time this comes up oh this is one of those things okay let's zoom out yeah they are actually very 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 close to this place Mm, so the geographically this world uh wraps vertically and horizontally so if we we go into edit here you can see um i have scroll type both loop both so that's vertically and horizontally so if we go down here we get to up here and if we go up from here we get to here uh, if we go over from here we're going to get towards this so that's towards the frozen place direction um but what that means, and there's a huge amount of, like, diagonally speaking, like, from here you can go up over to here. I'm not sure how much that's going to influence things, but these people are probably going to have some influence coming from Sacraton. Um, so, I'm not sure how much that's going to influence things. Because um, I'm trying to think of... Uh, this is a very old building over there. What the player's interactions with this place is going to be, right? Um, that's some of the post-astral collision stuff, but I need to think about, okay, what's going on here? Um, what's, what's some of their motivation? Um, I think they also have a well-developed and regarded police force that honestly probably doesn't actually have to do that much. I'm imagining this is a, so a society where uh, they have a uh, well-structured set of laws um, but ones that aren't that oppressive. I feel, so there, here's the thing. Evanshire is gonna have some tones that are similar to here and similar to Ron Piety, but not quite the same. So it's really important that I understand uh, what's gonna be the differentiation here between these. This is probably gonna be one of the more relaxed societies now, there, I, I do think that there's probably going to be some amount of this where if you are doing something wrong, excuse me, if you're doing something a little shady or whatever, your neighbors will report on you. Um, but they're not necessarily watching you 
they're like um people aren't uh hovering over you waiting for you to mess up but if they notice it will get reported uh generally uh lesser crimes don't receive too harsh of a punishment but repeat offenses uh will escalate quickly um yeah that's kind of so now I need to figure out, and this is really important, what's going on with the um, the astral collision events, and what brings that about? Um, so that's like that's something I'm definitely gonna need to figure out here. Um, hmm. And what sort of challenges are occurring in this world? Um, I feel like maybe they've gotten some invasion of some stuff. Uh, yeah, some of that's going to ha have to be post Astro Collision stuff. So I need to figure out why these people participate in the Astro Collision. And I need to figure out um, what the player group needs to do to interact with them. And I think um, in the wake of the astral collision, they've heavily militarized um, uh as they feel the freedoms of their land are under assault. Um, so, uh, these are the events Devon foresaw. It's important. Um, feel like uh, a lot of the player goal here, a lot of the player goal is de-escalation. Um, yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, so looking at, at this and thinking about it, um, Their research into the um, uh, other worlds shows them places that they believe need their brand of culture slash technology, uh, which leads them to um, participate in the astral collision uh, they do prepare militarily uh, with the understanding that there are nasty things out there um, but they believe they can improve the other worlds I think that's why they do that, the Astral Collision. They have this sort of um, mentality. This is very different. This is, um, yeah, this is a little bit of American exceptionalism sort of stuff going in. But I think it's kind of worth exploring some of that, um, some of that nationalistic pride. It's not necessarily just nationalistic, though. It's, it's pride in the way of one's lifestyle and thinking that uh, the world would be better if everybody had your culture and i think they probably have some of that going on uh they have some of the mentality that everywhere would be better with uh their 
cultural ideals and values. Uh, they need to come to regard the creator. Okay. Uh, Tulador. Tulador is a very coastal place. Um, we saw it. So Francis uh, is a wanderer of the wilderness who suddenly ran into town spouting frantic tales of death and destruction. Francis also perished during the astral collision events uh, and then was um, brought back post those events. People are going to be real confused if you bring Francis in your party. Because they're like, but you died. We saw you die. Um, is probably very violent for them, is my guess, but I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Uh, I'll need to figure out more about the astral collision, but that's going to be later. So Tulador loved the sea and got a world of only a coast. Shipping lanes became super important. Came to worship the sea, probably personified in some sort of sea goddess. Maybe wind weather deities, a sky god, and sea goddess, perhaps. Okay, so that seems like a pretty solid direction to go. Um, so Tulador... Tulador is... Good old waggling the cursor. Okay. Um, the C is central to Tuladorians. Ian's lives. This should have an apostrophe after it. Um. Okay. So let's think about this. Um. They have a cult of the sea goddess and sky god. Um, I'll need names for these deities at some point, but it's not terribly important at this exact moment. Um, put some parentheses here to put names in. Uh, the sea goddess represents plenty fertility, um, and bounty. I mean, okay, this, some of these are redundant terms. Um, the sky god presents uh, strength, ferocity, uh, and... Um, Let's see, because they would understand. Uh... So, let's let's think about this some. Um, so, for them, the sea is like they have a huge fishing industry. So, let's just put this. Uh, they have a huge fishing industry. Uh, lots of shipwrights uh, and things of that nature. So, um, the sky god would bring things like storms. They'd basically want the sky god to be calm because they see him as uh, making the sea violent and, and unpredictable. But also, like, winds are really important to sailing, uh, which I imagine they have a lot of. And that's probably where, like, um... And as well as sunshine to warm things and stuff like that. Um, the sea would be where they get their resources. Um, it's They would have a lot of fishing. Um, so, uh, but so there's um, an active role to the sky god and a uh, reactive role. Um, so reactive versus active right this is um just thinking about this uh, like how because these aren't real right these deities are not real they are their own personifications of these things that have huge impacts on their lives um so to them like the sea responds to the winds that's what the waves are right uh the 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 waves are the the wind blowing um the sea. So the sea, to some extent, reacts to what the sky is doing. Um, and so they'd very much so see the sky as the active one, and the sea as the reactive one. 
Uh, and then the sea would be a source of, of plenty and fertility. That's where they get their food, for example, and, and plentiful food. And because um, they eat a lot of seaweed and fish and other things, uh, they their agriculture is limited. They don't have a lot of land space. Uh, again, if we go over, yeah, over here, Tulador is this coast along here. They have some land. Um, trees are really important. Like this area is probably a major uh, shipwright. Like right here, they probably build a lot of ships in this city. Um, and otherwise, like trees, therefore, are kind of an important resource for that. Um, and uh, and whatnot. But they don't have a lot of land. They don't have a lot of agricultural space. They do a lot of their, uh, or a lot of their food comes from the sea. So they have a lot of fishing and uh, the shipbuilding is really important. Um, so Sky God would be like strength, frosty, um, and uh, capriciousness. Um and so this is more stable. Uh, the, the sea would probably be seen as a bit more stable uh, in some regards as well. So um, their rituals regarding the sea and sky deities are probably fairly simple. Um, I'm imagining a low, mid level of religion here. Um, most people engage with it casually and, uh, there are relatively few, um, you know what, uh, larger ships do often have a priest um do often have a priest uh and and possibly also a priestess i'm thinking here um let's see so um only women can become priests for the sea goddess and only men can become priests for the sky god. This makes sense to me as something that they would do as some sort of restriction, right? Um, okay, so huge fishing industry, lots of shipwrights and things of that nature. Francis is an uh, oddball who didn't much care for the sea and went to go live in the woods. That's just, yeah. Francis goes, hides. Francis probably lived somewhere in this sort of region, is my thinking. Um, and just went, lived in the woods, became a hunter. Very strange individual. Um, uh, they do have to contend, contend with, uh, sea monsters and monstrous birds uh, and like air spirits and such um, not many land based threats let's see um, now I need to figure out okay what does the player need to do here uh, and what does the astral collision have to do with anything? These are going to be common questions, right? It's very easy to kind of set up a world, but it's much harder to kind of figure out, okay, how's that world interact with the rest of the main core of what everything is about? Uh, and what I'm thinking here, and these have obviously gotten a little bit longer, more long-winded for me to kind of process as we've gone down, and some of them have gotten less straightforward. Uh, but let's see. You know what? Uh, 
astrology is probably astrology is probably a bit of a big deal for them for trying to pre that's not how you spell predict at all predict what the sky god is going to do and for what do you not like about this is is good what stop stop doing weird things um Okay, for trying to predict what the Sky God is going to do, and for, um, yeah, that, that's probably, um, oh yeah, and for navigation, that was the other thing. Um, that, I mean, that's more astronomy is the navigation aspect, but astrology and astronomy are theoretically somewhat similar terms that have come to mean rather different things. Largely due to uh, connotations, at least to me mentally. Um, this is, yeah, I'm not going to bother going into that. Uh, so anyway, it's probably a big deal for them. And this is likely what led to the uh, them participating in the astral collision. Uh, there were likely star signs that led to them uh, undertaking the actions necessary to cause it. Um, the player... Hmm, this is an interesting question. What will the player... What is the player's goal? With relating to this place. Yep, we've just hit an hour in record time. Okay, so... Um, the player's actions with regarding to this place. Uh, so, like, uh, Francis uh, probably warned of the dangers would occur if uh, they went through with these events. I don't know what this wall is about. I just wanted a wall. That's that's really what that's about. Um, his goal is to. Okay, so let's think about this. Um, if the the player's goal is probably to dispel the beliefs, so you know what what's probably happened is. Uh, Ron Piety has probably sent missionaries down into Tulador through that gap in the wall and the player probably needs to support those missionaries um oh imaging this is supposed to be imagining uh the player's goal is to um let's see uh dismantle the cult of the uh sky and sea deities that seems to me to be the the primary goal here, um, and establish a focus on the creator. Remember, the creator is a real deity, is a real god, and the sea and sky god uh, deities are complete fabrications. So, um, anyway, I'm going to I guess need to make this into another part because I'm kind of at uh, at time. I think going more than an hour is probably a bit much so i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up here and uh, until next time thank you for watching everyone hopefully this has been helpful or instructive or at least interesting and engaging definitely appreciate your your feedback on some of that stuff but until next time take care and goodbye <laughs>